So, hey, what's up? This is the Man Views Podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, your host, my co-host, Mr. Real Estate, Ben H. What up? We got a couple guests in studio, Carrie Ford, Jake Kaufman. You guys are both transformation coaches. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I got questions, okay? <laughs> I, I really do have questions because... I was about to say, the way that you said you guys are transformation coaches... coaches? Yeah, well, it's with it's the more... upswing and the question mark. <laughs> yeah, <Totally>. I know. <laughs> hey, that's right. Insinuating doubt? No, uh, uh, no, I don't doubt that at all. I'm just, I'm, I like, was curious as to mean? when you guys met because I figured it would probably one of two ways. You either like sparks flew, like you're a transformation coach. Mm -hmm. I'm a transformation coach, or it's like I'm gonna keep my fucking eye on you. I don't trust you. You're my competition. You know, and that's kind of, I was like, it, or it could have been a happy medium. It could have been somewhere in the middle. I just thought that that was pretty interesting that, well, how did you guys meet? Or were you both coaches at that time? No. And we met on the gram. We met on Instagram. Ah. The Grizzy Graham. Who slid we into did. whose DMs? She slid into mine. Boom. Girl that knows what she wants. Mm. Our chick. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's awesome. All right. So did you see he already, he was a transformation coach? I did. And then I decided to hire him. For you? Yes. Scandalous. She was trying to get secrets, the secrets say, of the business, right? And I was so. I was actually working with Ben in real estate at yep. the time. I was trying it's to true. get the fuck out of that job because yeah. I knew it was not my calling. Right. right. And so I hired Jake to help me with my vision and the business coaching part. So I'm like, how do I do this? How do I actually create a sustainable living off of coaching? I had tried it before. And right. so I decided to hire him. I will tell you, even though I slid into his DMs, it was nothing but professional, both of us, because I was not open at the time to a relationship. I was going through healing from a divorce and so when i hired him it was 100 percent professional and he was he is a great coach so he helped that's me that's awesome a lot. so now you use some of his trade secrets yes and, and, and apply towards your secrets. own clients that's well, pretty cool yeah, I, she knows I remember all that this, all i remember the keys she knows all, where all the keys are that's really true i remember that time too and and you know being friends with carrie at that time we would not talk all the time but we would talk sometimes and she would tell me kind of like on the dl like here's what i'm thinking here's what i want to do here's my ideas like how you know i'm trying to figure this out but I, i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it ben i'm like hell yeah you know i'll yeah. hire you you know what i mean i used to say that all the time i'm like I'm hired you know what i mean like done <laughs> and uh and and then when you did it this uh powerful move you were just like all right it's time i yeah. do love that like when someone tells you they're gonna do something yeah you know and not something stupid but right. like they're gonna like move in a completely different direction with their life you know they're gonna basically burn their boat and learn to swim in a sense mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i'm not sure if it was exactly it, was, fight. it was that right yeah Absolutely. and so but that's when sharks are swords and and for me personally <laughs> i remember that happening a couple pivotal points in my life where i set out to do something and everyone around me is like you're fucking stupid you ain't gonna get that done and then you know that's just on. because they don't believe in themselves right 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 but it's powerful when somebody tells you that and right, then Jake? you know in a short time they achieve it you're like that person's moving yeah, for sure and so and then and I want to add this too. So to see what you've done, you know, watching from a distance on Instagram and and all the marketing that you do, the women's lives that you're affecting and and the retreats and just all of this beautiful somatic work that mm -hmm. you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're focused on the somatic, which is the body, correct? Yeah. Not the brain, but right. the body. Correct. And it's just been incredible. I mean, it's just been unbelievable to see. And I guess it's been five years? Four years. Four, Four yeah, years? Okay. Yeah. I was in the courtyard of where we used to work on yeah. the phone with him, and I was like, yeah. I just quit. I just walked out. And so four you years. You did what? <laughs> and she's crushing it. That's awesome. Elevate well, with Carrie. Well, yeah, so Destroying let me read it. off some of her stats, and, you know, you should be able to be proud because she's a kind of a product of hey this is one of my projects <laughs> I have she's a walking testimonial yeah absolutely <laughs> that is true so carrie ford is the ceo Until and founder i'm going to repeat that ben you're interrupting her her intro of all of her sorry, stats sorry, which is going to make us feel stupid yeah, because yeah, yeah. she's got so many stats carrie ford is ceo and founder of elevate with carrie an elite transformational coaching movement luxury brand dedicated to serving and elevating women's emotional intelligence and whole body high performance. When I said that to Cassie, who just left, that you were going to be in here, I don't know that she had heard of you yet. And if she had, she's probably just not putting it together. But when I told her you were elevating women's emotional intelligence, you know, Cassie's all for that. And she's like, oh, hell, I want to listen to that. <laughs> 
So, um, Hell yeah, Cassie, so, if you're yeah, listening, let's get in touch. I was on your website, and there's so much to your website. I was like, holy shit, there's so much content on yeah. here. Your website is amazing. It's massive. And it's got, I didn't sign up for anything. I didn't know if it necessarily <laughs> applied. I was a little nervous. Jake would be your coach because he works with men. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You guys both had both awesome sites, but uh, Carrie, yours was very complex. Like you had just so much stuff from meditating. It, it's pretty impressive. Thank you. You should be proud for sure. Thank you. Now, Jake, I was actually, you uh, mentor coaches more than people, or is it a combination of both? Because when I was on your website, I, I saw there was a lot of stuff geared towards coaching. Yeah. So coaches. Ad- admittedly, my my website does need updating. Ah, he was busy writing a book. I might know a guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, as we all do. Yeah, right. But the work that I've been doing lately over the past few years has transitioned away from working with coaches specifically. Uh, that's kind of how I broke into the online space to begin with, was support supporting other online coaches and consultants and growing and scaling their businesses through organic online marketing and sales strategy. In addition to incorporating personal development because business strategy without personal development will always be incomplete and insufficient because absolutely as i like to say to my clients people don't have business problems they just have personal problems that show up in their business but the work that i've been doing lately with Boom. men ha- has very mm-hmm. much been focused on the interpersonal work that is inherently necessary for us to succeed in every area of life and thrive in every area of life yeah, absolutely. so my website is probably not the most accurate rep- representation okay. of what i do it's lately. all been said me i told i had no, yep. no that's fair that's fair that's what you but, know hook, hooked me in but, though that's but but I... not to cut you off but sure. there was something on your website yep. w- when in terms of this book that i was captivated mm. by it was not only a brilliant piece of marketing but it was real it was vulnerable and it i don't, I don't know it, it just said volumes about you your own personal development and your ability to really be that vulnerable and so your book it's a story of how you were sexually abused and then the person who did this abuse to you you were basically reading a message from that person to you so i don't ever actually talk about that in the book okay uh, i believe but this was the video that i was just captivated by Correct. you didn't even need to talk about it in the book i'm, bu- I'm by the book sure anyway just because it was so real i appreciate and it that. Was sad and it was uh, yeah it just yeah it pulled strings you know and i just thought, thank you for hats off to you sir thank you very much i appreciate that feedback so the book kind of starts off with in roughly i would have been 27 28 at the time so this would have been 2012 2013 i acknowledged an experience that i went through growing up as as sexual abuse in work with a therapist. Ooh. Right. And so this kind of sent me down this path of, of personal development because the moment I acknowledged it, then I was forced to confront it. And so several years later, so this would have been early 2019 at this point. So I've gone through years of counseling, therapy, personal development work to really heal from that experience and undo how that experience showed up in, in my behavior. Right, of course. Because it's going to shape you. Correct. And the results that I created in my life as a result in career, in relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And when I shared my story on social media, my nervous system just collapsed. And I suffered from what is clinically referred to as an acute nervous system breakdown. Okay. A panic attack on steroids is probably the best way to think about it. The amount of connection that posting my story on social media created, because as you can probably imagine, I started getting tons of comments, messages, text messages, DM messages from people. Some you knew, some you didn't. Strangers, coworkers, clients, family, family, friends, you name it. Some people who knew about what had happened and were acknowledging me for it. Some people who I didn't even know who were sharing that they had been through something similar. Right, and that's where it really, that's where you really start affecting other people. Totally. Again, this was not my intention to get attention from other people, but it was to simply inspire them to step into their own healing journey because throughout my time as a coach, because I had started my coaching business a year or two prior to this. Mm -hmm. So in my work with my clients, I realized, wow, so many people have been through what I've been through. I'm not unique in this regard whatsoever. It's just that so few people have actually shared it with someone else. Well, right. And they haven't done anything about it yeah and i think it would be just like you know this whole me too movement Mm -hmm. that was sparked a few years ago i mean how many women have you know been victim to yep you know being preyed upon by someone in a higher position than them yeah 
And then all of a sudden, some people stepped out and they're like, well, fuck it. Me too. Right. It's very similar. Like, you know, because I get it. You don't want to step forward. You don't want that attention. Right. Typically, you know. Uh, so let me ask you another question. How did you get over? Did you go to another therapist? I did. Uh, so how hard was it to be able to trust? You pay, you know, I don't know if it was your family that sent you to this therapist mm -hmm. or if you were flipping the bill, but you paid for a therapist to, to help you and mm -hmm. you don't expect to. To get scarred and yeah, experience I mean, trauma by them. Totally. They help you get through the trauma. Yeah, right. Because as a 12 or 13 year old, as a young adolescent, I didn't know what to do with that experience. Of course not. And so I did what pretty much anyone would do. Stuff it down. Stuff it down. Mm -hmm. Suppress. It and, didn't happen. Yep. Yeah. Suppress and repress it. Mm -hmm. And But that, of course, didn't make that experience go away, nor did no. it undo it the damage will. that it created. Right. right. And so it wasn't until 15 years later when I finally acknowledged it for what it was I was forced to confront the emotions that I had been unconsciously working so hard to avoid all those years. Right. So that in and of itself, while it was relieving to acknowledge it for what it was, it was also very terrible at the same time because all of these emotions that I had been working so hard to avoid came back. Came back. Full. And all of a sudden I'm tapping into a well of pain that I didn't even know was there. Even worse than you probably could have imagined. A hundred percent because there was an array of different emotions because whenever we experience trauma, trauma is very multifaceted. There's what was leading up to the trauma itself. Mm -hmm. There was the trauma itself. There was what was going on around you when that incident happened. And then there's, of course, what happened after the fact. Post. And so there's all these different facets and layers to trauma, um, the people involved, how it was handled after the fact, if it was handled at all, that go into having us form these different personality traits that are quite literally in response to pain. Right. Um, and, and moving forward into the future in response to preventing pain. Right. And, and that's where I found myself realizing that, you know, as a 27, 28 year old, who I had become was in so many ways in response to pain or, or to prevent this pain from happening again. Ed, were you self aware of kind of how you had become or were people around you that loved you, friends, were they telling you, you know, this is kind of how you are and it's not, probably not as good as you can be and, or sure. not as, yeah, I mean, so how, were you getting that from outside feedback or did you know inherently I'm not right or I'm not acting right, I, I'm not handling things in my life the way that I think. I'm not going to say you weren't healthy, but, uh, you know, your vision of totally. yourself as a healthy person. Yeah, it was a little, it. it was a little bit of both, to be honest with you. I don't know if that made sense. No, absolutely. It totally made sense. It was, it was a little bit of both, but I would say it was more so me coming to terms with having created the life that I said I always wanted. Right. And on some deep inherent level, feeling very empty and, and unfulfilled and having to be with the reality of that and ask myself, OK, why? Why do I feel this way? Because I had become a master at hiding, as you can probably imagine. Yeah. I experienced this very traumatic, painful incident. And so I start unconsciously performing and putting on all of these different masks. Of course, I was just about to say masks. You right. Know, you're yeah. wearing a mask. And personality literally derives from the word persona, which quite literally means mask. So I start to become the people pleaser. I start to become performer. So I'm overcompensating, three-sport athlete, excelling in academics, eventually thriving in my career and in finances. I mean, the corporate ladder. And from the outside, people are probably like, man, look at this motherfucker. Look at Correct. him go. And at the same time, like, he's got the life. But if they really found, and this is where, you know, fake book, I mean, it's like you can never judge anybody by the right. what they're doing or the way they look because the people that seem to have it all together sometimes are the most miserable. And you guys probably deal yeah. with that. We see it is, all the time. Yeah, I, we, we'll get to that. I have questions about that it's, too. <laughs> it's way more common than, than you think. But yeah, all of that was an adaptation or or an overcompensation to avoid dealing with pain. All of these personality traits or characteristics that led me to be successful were just compensating strategies that allowed me to act as if, from the outside looking in, I've got it all together, as you mentioned. Right. And so it wasn't until I was like, okay, I did all of these things. I accomplished all these things. Why do I feel empty and unhappy and unfulfilled? What is this internal tension that I'm experiencing as a result of what I've been through in my life? Because again, I had accomplished everything that I had pretty much set out to accomplish in terms of my career and still found myself wanting and still found myself feeling empty. And so I was forced to take a peek underneath the hood, if you will, and do some reflection. I hate that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Peeking under it's the true. hood. true. Never know what you're going to find under there. When I met Jake, I guess like three weeks ago or something, 
maybe a month ago. You've only met Jake as of three weeks ago. Right, and I haven't seen Carrie in years since she left, you know, the place where... She's been being tutored by Jake. Well, you know, they (laughs) they came to a a mutual... This is a long time ago. A a mutual friend of of mine and Carrie invited us to, to an event that he was having for his real estate company. And so we came, and Jake was with Carrie, and I got to sit down and talk to Jake and meet him and obviously reconnect with Carrie, and he gave me this book. And, you know, me and my typical fashion i was like cool man i'll read it this weekend you know what i mean i'll and- listen to your mixtape <laughs> yeah, i yeah. promise <laughs> and then and then you know i woke up the next day and i was like dang i told him i was going to read it this weekend i want to do that man, you know and word. so and so i read the book in like two days that's not because it's necessarily an easy read but it's not incredibly long it's a hundred and doesn't have to be 144 <laughs> pages if you got right? the recipe for what you need like to hear it's all but it the takes. point the point is that when i started reading it not only did i connect with jake's story and and I was it's a really riveting book the way that it's written the characters and everything it's just very well done Jake but I empathized with him and his experience and at the same time it was causing me to reflect on my own life as a boy as someone who had my own trauma that I had gone not the same necessarily as Jake but leading all the way up through my adult life and I I felt like I gleaned so much value from the book because what Jake did here you talk about honesty this book is so honest I mean that's what I'm talking level about of honesty video, that, uh, the there's a level of honesty website. here that I mean you're almost scared to be honest dishonest with yourself right much less anyone else much less write it in a book everyone well, else so you're talking about breaking through massive but, walls to get this stuff what, on paper that's sure. what heals I mean, people that's mm-hmm. what relates to people no yeah. one wants to hear about your perfect shit shiny but i mean no no one's life is perfect and all shiny but no one wants to hear all that shit People so, want to hear how you overcame, of course, how you. Thrived. Well, and then it's a con, and then it's a con. It's it never ends, right? I mean, it's ultimately never ending. Even when you get to a certain point, you know, you're at a different point, but it's not like you're there. And so I can identify with you. And we've talked about this a lot on the show. You know, I I, I battle with a lot of different mental health issues and different sure. things. And I'm one of those guys that from the outside looking in. It's unbelievable. I live a great life. I have a beautiful family. I mean, I've I've done it all by design, you know, and I've accomplished a lot of great things. But this brought up a lot of things for me that I've been working through and I think I'm a better person because I read this book mm. well, I and can't I'm a better version of myself wow. I appreciate wow. that and yeah. I hope I hope that we can stay in contact and you know talk I love about you no I mean <laughs> dude seriously start of a bromance I, so yeah. I would I would yeah exactly real, it's gonna though. be a bromance for sure uh, but you wanna hold him Ben I wanna hold him <laughs> do you wanna you sit wanna here? hold Jake do you want Carrie well, no, to but, you and Carrie wanna you, sit you, switch but, get out of here Carrie but no I'm just I'm, I'm, I wanna express myself genuinely because like you are I want to recommend that everybody listening reads this book. That's awesome. I Whether you're a male, a female, I don't think it matters. And Specifically the-, the guys out there, I think it would really, because you're going to relate with the with Jake and, and his struggles, but we all have trauma. And the book. We all have stuff. Yep. That we're struggling with, that we're afraid to mention. We've all got stuff buried down in there from our childhood and our past. It's affecting you today. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's affecting your happiness and, and your capabilities and everything. So the book so is called Read the Book. <laughs> Let Love In. The pain stops when the truth starts. Yeah. That's that's yeah. deep. That's deep right there. Brene right Brown down. says about shame that it needs three things to survive: secrecy, silence, and judgment. So you set yourself like free that. the minute you share. Shame. Secrecy, silence, and judgment. Mm-hmm. It's like the thing you swear you're going to take to the grave, that's the thing you tell people. That's the thing you share. And then everyone steps into the circle and says, fuck me too. Yeah. Well, and Ben, you pointed out something really important, which I don't think most people understand, which is when you touched on trauma, that we all have trauma, yeah. whether it's big T trauma like what I experienced with an abuse or an assault. But on some level, we all have emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because trauma is primarily about how we internalize what happened to us, Mm. not what actually happened. The beliefs and the stories that we made up about ourselves, other people, or the world and how we fit into the world, how we relate to others in the world, Mm -hmm. that creates these limitations, that creates this lack of self-esteem that then causes us to develop these compensating strategies that keeps us in a state of performance Mm. And it disconnects us. It causes this fracture in our authentic self. Right. right? So it, Carl Jung would refer to this, the famous psychotherapist, as the false self. Okay. Others refer to it as the admired identity right? that seeks to answer. Makes the, sense. Yeah, that seeks to answer the question, who do I need to be? What do I need to do? And right. how do I need to be perceived in order to be loved, accepted, and successful? Right. That becomes like the entire ledger for most people. Right. Not... Who am I authentically and what feels natural to me? Yeah. 
And I think this is why most people die with so much regret. The yes. number one regret of the dying is that I wish I had lived a life true to myself. Wow. Yeah, and that would be like, I mean, for people that, yeah. and I, I can't even imagine, like, you know, being in the closet as someone who relates as, as gay or homosexual mm -hmm. and having to wear that mask and act like, that's just like one of those things where I'm like, how could you not live your authentic self? And whether it be parents or, you know, mm -hmm. like, I mean, that, that to me just sounds sounds so exhausting and so well and most people don't even realize that they're doing this that's kind of the big thing when you're when you're performing you don't really realize that you're performing because the number one goal of the ego is to maintain the status quo right, right? the false self and how does it do that it hides the truth from you makes sense so it's going to convince you that what you're doing how you're living is Authentic. who you are uh, real right? Right? My, my personality is who i am no it's not your personality is who you've become and typically what carrie and i have found is your personality, it's absolutely this amalgamation of genuine traits, for sure, but it's also incorporated heavily by these adaptive traits or these compensating strategies that we've taken on in response to pain or in order to prevent ourselves from re-experiencing pain. And so our stance becomes against. We are trying to actively prevent something from happening again. Mm -hmm. So we've experienced a challenging cycle and now the majority of our energy Energy is focused on not repeating that challenging cycle. Of course. But most of this is unconscious, like I mentioned, right. just like it was for me, where I didn't realize that I was taking on all of these different masks in an attempt to appear successful and like I had it all together so that you can't hurt me again, so that I can't be taken advantage of or abused again. But that's what was going on. And so most people don't even realize they're doing this. What they do realize though is, okay, I have this beautiful life. I've accomplished a lot. At least this is what we carry and I find with the majority of our clients. Why do I feel anxious? Why do I struggle to slow down? Why can't I be present? Why can't I increase the level of connection and intimacy in, in my relationship with my significant other? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Right, these, <laughs> these interpersonal, internal roadblocks that are the source of resistance for so many that prevent people from ascending consistently in the different areas of their life.